going into the grand finals, uh, like getting here, right? Getting, yeah, past uh, no, getting, stage, yeah, getting to this here. final level, yeah. So Liquid uh, are definitely going to have the momentum behind them. There is no doubt about that. And here we go, Matu bringing the Necrophos to the main stage. It really is going to be incredibly interesting to see how it goes on. And as a, you know, as you said, Miracle on something that he's done once, but not too common. Kuroki and GH, though, on the other hand, two here and Mind Control. Of course, these three on Heroes, they're, they, they're like their bread and butter. So the Mind Control with the Darkseer, GH with the Zio, and Kuro on the Tusk that he brings back. Pretty much every game that they can, we see a Kuroki Tusk. And every game that we can, we also see a uh, Io on yeah. GH. We actually have not seen GH play this here in a while because it is almost always auto ban, but setting up for a hero like the Storm, it's, uh, it's gonna be tough for little old GH. But I, I think he's one of the best Wisp players. I definitely is. So. The, the, the uh, GH has uh, an incredible uh, record with with I, I imagine over the years. It's, it's definitely one of the heroes that comes to mind as something that he's incredibly flashy on mid lane. Already Liquid getting heavy with the harassment onto some mail, making sure the Miracle has that easy time in the opening. A couple of waves and, and something as you said he needs because otherwise the storm can cause issues for a spend on a 1v1. We need a poll. How many heroes does it take to shut down Sumail in late? <laughs> we have three right now. Three versus one. And they may get him this time. The shards come through. Sumail in trouble. A TP isn't going to be quick enough from Zai as Liquid get that first blood. And that indeed seems to be the plan. Try and tilt Sumail. I think with the Wisp in mid, there's an additional benefit of being able to uh, stack the Ancients very easily from the mid lane. So I really do like this pairing coming up from Liquid, and Sumail is going to have a really hard time. And I also do not think that they can contest the early Ancient stack. So they have the laning phase advantage, they have the mid game farm advantage, and all things looking pretty swell for them. It's going to be up on the clockwork combined with the Crystal Maiden Aura to propel EG through this early laning phase. Zion Kuroki, training blows there as they try and keep each other away from the middle lane. Kuroki trying to have a look at it again, does have to be careful in case another torrent comes through and does catch him out. But he'll play it safe, Zai holding on to the torrent for, for bigger issues. Side lanes, top lane, Universe is having an amazing time. He's 11 for 3 against the 6 for 0, it seems to be a, a pretty easy lane for this clock in this 1v1. Or at least Universe is showing it as, as to be. Yeah, the level one heart stopper not really doing too much. Juniper is actually going for just a lot of cog burn on Matumba Man. Matumba Man, as an Ekrofus, struggles a lot with mana issues and. Ideally, you want to be able to tether both of these heroes, Necrophos and Spend, and it's going to be a tough call for GH as to which one he wants to tether first. And, and all things considered, and with that pressure as well being put on the, the Sumail in the mid lane, overall CS is looking better for EG. All three of their lanes finding the CS at the moment, and uh, Liquid just slightly behind. Obviously, very early days and indeed very close, but a slight edge in terms of CS. Uh, the EG. CS is a, a lot of it are neutrals though for Sumail, so these are worth way less, and Sven's getting a lot of denies in the mid lane, so these two are going to be very, very high in terms of levels. And look at this as well, Kuroki's got his eyes on Sumail. Sumail will start to salve up, and that will cause him to, to be a little too healthy for Kuroki to want to go in for a, a bit of a tickle as he heads back towards the mid lane. We'll see where, where else he can head to make the plays around the map. But uh, at the moment, Zai just trying to do his best to mirror the movements of the Tusk. They're waiting to make a move on mid lane. Wisp and Tusk are perched on the cliff left of the mid lane. They're deep with the wraparound here. They have they, eyes they on Zai. See Zai yeah. They could try and roll down upon a miracle, trying to see if he can close the gap. I just go for a bit of a tickle here with the shards, and uh, GH just right clicking him down from the high ground. The torrent is not going to connect, and in fact, Zai has been spotted out. He's been taken down, Liquid. With the positioning there and the ice shard trap, making sure there's no escape for the Admiral. I, and in fact, they're going to get this one as well, by the looks of it, with the Storm Hammer and the ice shards. Liquid, they're getting away with murder twice in the middle lane. Zai comes in to try and stop them, but Miracle, he's still full of mana thanks to GH. He can go in for more. Zai trying to body Duke around the tree line. It's not going to be successful. There will be a TP and a frostbite from Crit to hold back Miracle. Has he got the speed to close this down? One more touch will do it. He has the walk right side, tries with the top, but he's not soon enough to hold Miracle back. Another kill in the middle lane for Liquid. And they're looking, looking for Crit as well. Kuroki 
Has he got the mana? Has he got the control? Crit will go for a bounty rune. Can Liquid finish this kill off? Wards drop down. They have the vision. Crit looking to be in a lot of trouble as well. He'll try and hide himself here in the tree line, but Liquid surround him. Mind control comes across for a piece of the action, and Liquid pick up a fifth kill in the first four and a half minutes. GH and Kuroki doing absolute work here in this early game. I think this Wisp uh, cosmetic might actually, like the non uh, portal one, I think it might actually have some benefits because he had DD on for almost the entire early it's phase. So it's hard really to tell. Hard Mid to tell. lane again, straight in Samael, just can't catch a break here. The only time we really saw it slow down for Samael was when he was just away from the mid lane into the jungle. As soon as he comes back to this mid lane, death after death because of Liquid's play. It, the West just speeds up a lot of uh, Liquid's game a lot. Like normally Sven, you don't see getting this yeah. involved this early, but Absolutely. not that many heroes can take the T1. But with the West and the Warcry, things are getting out of control for EG in this early game. And they're supposed to have stronger lanes, I would say, with the Crystal Maiden, but she is not really anywhere to be found except back in the fountain after dying multiple times. And we're seeing now that Matuma's got his levels. He's, he's getting a clear edge against Universe's Clock in the CS. Bottom lane still definitely the, the best news for EG. They have Arteezy getting incredibly solid farm. He's at the top of the moment on the Bristleback, so it will all potentially start to, to change a little bit when EG start to bring Bristle into the fight, so fight around Arteezy. That could be when we see Liquid hit a bit of a brick wall, but at the moment, they're going to be so far ahead potentially with this early game that they're going to be able to climb straight over. Zai is in a lot of trouble. He's got to be careful. Kuroki has that deep ward down. They've got the vision. They know where he is. They come in, trap him in the shards. Miracle being a little hesitant here. Ro trying to juke out the torrent will be unsuccessful. It connects. It doesn't matter though. He just moves in with the god strength. Takes Zai down. Critting Universe coming in. EG trying to do their best to turn this with the snowballs out. They've got the god strength They're continuing to punch into Universe. Universe, can he escape from this? He can't. As GH picks up the killing spree. An eighth kill for Liquid. Make that a ninth double kill for Miracle as Liquid are just not holding back in this middle lane. Just brutality after brutality. And in fact, Zai is he even safer. Kuroki and Miracle, they're still ready to fight. The shards won't block Zai. They do push him away. He has a bit of a chance to get away now. And Samael can potentially look to try and turn or at least find a kill for the side of EG. They've got the torrent on Kuroki. He will get bursted down. So finally, EG getting themselves on the kill board. But still, Liquid 9 to 1, 4k gold lead in the first seven minutes of this game. And in the meanwhile, you have this Necrophos pushing the safe point tower. Tower's already down. Oh, and they're back. Universe is rather deep here. He's got to be careful. They've got the war cry. Trying to chase. Oh, and Kuroki with that shot. They're buying the time for them to close in. The Reaper side won't finish you off the kill, but they still get it nonetheless after. 10 to 1. EG just can't keep up. They've already taken down two of the important T1 towers as well. So EG looking at them, what they need to do, they need to stack and form Anxious with Bristle. I would say maybe even get him involved a little bit early on. He is going for the early Vanguard, but his team is in shambles. They are just so poor and constantly beating. This is just never ending. But Liquid, there are three wards, one in close to each of the three lanes. Uh, they have good access point to the stack. Tusk and Stick scattered that out earlier. So there's not actually that many places for Storm Spirit to farm stacks, for Bristleback to farm stacks. Their team fight is also not particularly great. Kunkka Boat, probably their best team by ultimate. Meanwhile, you have the potential Wombo combo with the Darkseer and the Sven. It's very scary. And you I also have a, yeah. Yeah, you have this Angie stack, and then you also have good pickoff potential because of the relocate. Yeah, these, these fights are going to be so hard for EG. I mean, how do EG stabilize this game and, and get the chance to, to really bring themselves back in? Is it, is, is it about Samael hitting a certain item? Where, who's their focus? Who's the pressure on at this stage? I would say easily Bristol, yeah. too, because he's the one that hasn't been in any of these fights. He hasn't been helping out his mid lane. He, his tower is still up. He's the one that can do ancient stacks, and he's the most farm hero on the EG side. So I think they actually need to play around the shrine. Uh, notice they haven't used the bottom Radiant Shrine yet, and if they could take a fight around the Ancients when Bristle uh, is already doing it with a lot of Warpath stacks up, perhaps that could be their avenue back into this game. Nine minutes in, and Miracle has the Mask of Manus and the Treads complete. Five and a half K net worth. Flying up middle. This is a big difference from 
uh, some of the other games where we see Sumail get dual mid. Usually when he gets dual mid, usually they'll respond with at least one and Zai and occasionally two heroes with Zai and Crit both making sure that they can make sure that Sumail doesn't die this many times in the early game. But he is quite well known for his Stone Spirit and definitely should not count them out yet. Absolutely not. There's definitely potential for EG, but it is diminishing as the game goes on at this stage. Top lane, Arteezy moving himself in to contest the farm of Matumba Matt. Very close to that in the Necro. Only a, a few hundred between the two of them. And in fact, straight away... Wiz just hit six. Yeah. So now they can make a move. Uh, we see a smoking coming in from Matumba and Kuro looking up to set up a kill on the Storm Spear. Storm Spear is level eight, so he can jump away, but with relocate... If they side immediately, there's going to be no chance for the escape. Snowball into the side. They didn't even need the relocate, but they'll bring in to witness the death again of Samael. 35 seconds out of the map. They probably didn't know that Wisp was 6 because they don't have a good Observer Wars up in that ancient area and he took out a massive stack that GH and Miracle are already back doing right now. They might sack this T1 tower but they're still getting more than enough farm around the map. So they're just ignoring our TC because Bristle doesn't farm incredibly fast uh, if he's not taking down Ancients. So they're EGR forced to put Bristle back in the lanes because he's the only hero that's not going to die. But it's hurting their overall farm a lot. EG will claim tier 1 tower from the top, an extra bit of boost to RTZ's bank. And at the same time, Liquid in return, taking that bottom tower. But to my man, Rod of Atos first item for this Necro. So an extra bit of control that's going to be very, very hard for Samael to play around. Oh yeah, that is actually incredibly bad for the Storm. Yeah. Because as long as they kill him a few times, I think they can kite the Bristle indefinitely, and they have Warcry. So you can actually ignore the Sven or ignore the Bristle for first, you know, seven, eight seconds of the fight, and just kill everyone else. And at this point, with the farm distribution on EG, it seems like everyone else is going to die aside from the Bristle, and then they can just deal with him, kite him, wait for the stacks to fall off, and then finally take him down. It really seems for, for EG to, to have a chance of winning a fight, it's got to be about the pickoffs. It, it, just in any situation where there's full five heroes on both sides, the, the mass just doesn't check out for EG. They haven't got the damage or the control to out sustain it. In fact, Kuroki going in with a, a very deep dive. The tunnel over there to hold him back, but Miracle brought in by GH will find the kill. The boat comes through only to connect onto mind control. The miracle. The rest of the god strength moves down towards the bottom tier two as they could are able to claim another. In fact, they want to try and defend the top tier two. EG were pushing in, but RTZ left around already too low. Takes a reaper side to the base. The snowball's there to catch with the freezing field and Liquid just won't give evil geniuses a break. I think the Tusk is actually really good versus Bristol. I think the panel talked about the Sven and the Necrophos, but the Tusk is pretty good because with the shards, you actually force him to turn back into you. That's true. That's what we just saw there. He shard him at the tower, and what are you going to do? Stay in the shards for the entire duration? You have to turn back into the enemy team so that you can run away. And that brief second that he was faced towards the dire base, he gets reapered in the face. That's painful. Your most farmed hero gets Reapered and just makes quick work of. What, what an incredible start for Liquid. This is... Well, we've got to be one of the biggest leads we've seen this early on in the games here at Epicenter. 14 to 1, 13 minutes in, 9k gold lead. 9k gold lead for 9k players. Absolutely. Liquid showing us how to well and truly deal with the bristle. Just focus on crushing the mid lane in the early game and having this Necro now at this stage where because you have this lead, it's, it's relatively easy to bring Arteezy down to the threshold where he's going to pop under Aretha's side. And he's not that tanky. All he really has is just a bunch of small items. Vanguard being the significant one, but Vanguard, damage block versus God Strength. Not really blocking a whole lot there, percentage-wise. See what they can find here, Arteezy. Gotta be careful, Liquid with the full five man ready to fight. Can he do something big to turn this die? He's gonna be the one to be opened upon. Is he gonna get a chance to get anything out? He will get out the torrent. Hold back Miracle and Kuroki, but the Rod of Atos is there, controlling Arteezy. Samel trying to zip in to take down GH, but GH is kept alive. The snowball comes back in for Kuroki. The Reaper side's there. Samel's out. Arteezy down as well. EG, they've lost three. They're gonna lose even more. Grit tries for the freezing field, but Miracle picks up the triple kill. And Liquid fighting for taking the tier two. Ben, this
this game may even be over. Yeah, I'm trying to push high ground. I like the Wisp and Necro pairing a lot too because Necro actually keeps your Wisp alive. That's one of the worst parts about playing Wisp is everyone focusing you down. As you saw that fight, they try to kill the Wisp, but Necro is really good at protecting his little ball buddy. How do you stop this push? 14 minutes in, losing a tier three. The Lexmark Miracle back, but he doesn't mind. He knows he's got the backup. Easy escape. Now they have the mech complete on mind control. More and more items coming together to, to fuel Liquid's push to the high ground, which at this rate could come again in very shortly. Taking down the shrines. Evil geniuses. What's their plan? They finally get that hood finished up on Arteezy, so at least now he can remain a little alive, but there's so much to go around that. The God Strike from Miracle. Even at this stage, the, the punch from Kuroki. I think like Sven right now is just, he's pretty much like a bristleback, in that he just does tons of damage and incredibly difficult to kill. And he's he's being more of a bristle boss than bristle boss is. Uh, it, it seems, yeah, you've... You may have complained about the Bristleback <laughs> pickers, but now it's the, it's the Necro Sven pickers you've got to be worried about. These guys coming in with the answers. Kuroki with the strats. And now again with the smoke. Heading across, Arteezy is trying to get a break here, farming a big ancient stack. But he may just lose his life and not get anything out of this miracle. Straight up to the high ground. The snowball closing in. Crit will try to TP over to the shrine, but Arteezy's already dead. And now Crit, he's in trouble as well. They'll drag him back with the vacuum. A couple of hits, a crit and a punch. And Crit is gone. They'll take the ancients as well. I don't know, man. This game one at the grand finals of Epicenter. And it's got to feel pretty good for Liquid and pretty bad for Evil Geniuses. So this fight, they take out the only team fighter that they have immediately at the start. And GH is, he has Warcry to bump him up. He has the Death Pulse to heal him up. And he also has a Surge. I think he gets all three in the Earth. So there's very little way of killing him. There's just, this is just dirty. I mean, it's straight back into the action in the middle lane. Zai getting caught out at the base. 16 and a half minutes in, the melee rack's in trouble. EG. Have they got any hopes here holding with just the four of them? Minimal items that they've been able to build up in comparison to how stacked Liquids are, the heroes are, and there we have it, the vacuum combo comes through, Universe will try and hold them back, but Crit's already fallen, the Blade Mallet doesn't matter, they just fight through it, take him down as well, RTZ gets smacked in the face by a hefty uppercut from Kuro, and it's game over, it really is, 17 minutes in, 24 to 1, an absolute beatdown for Evil Genius, as Liquid smiles on the face, and that absolutely warranted, they... What, what a way to start the Grand Finals for them. An incredible just follow through of the momentum that they've been building up all this tournament. So let's just take away from that game. Make sure you protect Sumail a little bit better. You have to think twice about giving them Wisp. Uh, those are pretty much the two main things. Maybe first facing up Bristle also deserves some reconsideration now that Liquid has put out two counters on the table. Yeah. I mean, that was that was just insane. And uh, I mean, that's always good news if we're going to see less bristle, you know, if they, they consider it was maybe a hero that was, I mean, as, as weird as it sounds, a little too slow paced for this game. Normally a hero that's great at keeping up, but when a game is over in 17 minutes in and, you know, that mid lane is getting countered that hard, what, what, what is the plan? I mean, Ben, I, I, I mean, so, uh, that, it didn't feel like a finals. It, if that was worse than the show match, Ben, I mean, <laughs> come on, that was. That's why we banned Necrophos, dude. You did? We did. You knew. So you knew. This, at this point, you just have to look forward to the other, other three games that you're you're looking forward to win. And you have to, again, secure Sumail's lane and think about how you want to approach the Wisp. That's pretty much the two main things that you need to take away from the game. There wasn't much to it. They had one kill yeah. to 24. They lost two of their lanes, I would say. It wasn't the most lane stompy thing, except in the mid lane where Sumail just got dumpstered. And then he lost 